welcome back guess what huge update on the kratom situation um well let's just uh take let's let the uh, fda commissioner take it away let's see what he has to say never heard of, of this supplement before kratom tell, tell us what it is and why you're concerned about it well, it's being widely used right now. It's an opioid-like substance. Um, we think it has addictive qualities, and it's also being used by people who have addictions to opioid drugs as a way to help um, uh, relieve their addiction. Some people are using it as an adjunct to opioid opioids who are addicted to opioids, and some people are trying to use it as medically assisted treatment to try to come off their addiction. Um, but we have a lot of concerns around it. We believe it's fueling new addiction, and we also believe that if it does have therapeutic benefits and can be helping people, uh, we want to see science that can help prove that. Right now, we don't have reliable science that proves that it has any benefit. This is something that I could just walk into a drugstore and buy at this point? Uh, it's being sold in some botanical stores. People are All right, I just wanted to pause it up right there real quick. And uh, back here, he was talking about how, um, you know, and I mean, I, I kind of agree with some of the points he made there. Um, Kratom, uh, there is a little bit of a fear that it is causing new addictions but um a lot of, a lot of people would argue that you know throwing caution to the wind on that argument is kind of saying that these new addictions to kratom are not as horrendous as the addictions uh to the other substances like that could be uh kratom could be the replacement for i guess what i'm trying to say is it so people are starting off with kratom and they've never done opioids before i mean it could be a slight concern um the other concern is that there's not science there's not tests there's you know all this stuff so automatically why would you want to put it in schedule one that would make it harder to do the tests? well that's the whole idea guys and i'm the, the overarching theme of this update here is basically like this guy is going to give his recommendations to the DEA. They're trying to make Kratom a Schedule 1 drug. There, there's no other way to read into this. And you'll see the, the evidence that I have is basically the way that the FDA is stonewalling um, real science and real scientists that have chimed in for Kratom. And he is also uh, basically like putting out some really bogus information to back up his claims. And, well, you know, his other concern, I guess, was that we, since we, we would need more scientific research to know what the real dangers of Kratom is. And that, that's kind of like, we want to do that. Sure. Why not? Um, I've seen different things on, uh, from different people that have different experiences with Kratom. So it's not always like, you know, you can't, basically put a completely positive spin on it all the time now that being said i think it all has to do with uh the way people use um kratom um so that's all you know like i like he said it all should be studied and looked at and figured out that we can agree on that at least but that's about it <laughs> here he goes ordering it online it comes in different forms there was an article in the new york post this weekend about it being sold in coffee shops in new york city so there's different forms that it comes in um, we're holding it at the border. We've impounded hundreds of thousands of pounds of this substance, but a lot of it's coming into the U.S. regardless. All right, so this has been ongoing since 2014, I believe, that the, that the FDA has put out an emergency order against Kratom to seize shipments of it at the border. Now, this this isn't like the FDA themselves are standing at the borders, you know, flagging shipments of Kratom. Um, the border customs agents or whatever flag them if they see them, you know. I mean, and like you said, a lot of it still gets in. So it's not like they got it on all the way locked down. But with his latest um, rhetoric coming out, I, it, I would have to guess that that's that it would seem like they're ramping up the efforts to focus on making sure they stop as much kratom coming in as they can um who knows that that could be what's going on uh, we've had concerns about this for a long time the dea tried to schedule it in 2016 and we're currently working with the dea to look at a, a scheduling process now we're coming up with what we call an eight factor analysis which, which assesses the product 
um, we'll make that we've made that available to the DEA and for their consideration they'll make a scheduling decision based on our analysis so it's a legal product right now but you are holding it at the border how, how do you do that what what authority do you have to do that uh, we have authorities at the border because it's a, it's a foreign, uh, unapproved substance coming in. Um, we think it has drug-like properties, so we're holding it as under our authorities, both uh, our new drug authorities as well as the authorities we have to hold botanical products like this. Um, we think this is a drug-like substance. We think it is an opioid analog in many respects, and so we're holding under those, those authorities. I mean, this kind of explains a little bit or gives us a little insight into how complicated the whole opioid war is. What, what are the things is the FDA doing right now? Well, I think it's a real challenge when it comes to trying to come up with ways to treat people who are currently addicted. And I know people are looking towards Kratom as one potential alternative that can help ease their addiction or treat the, the symptoms of, of addiction. Um, we know that there's a lot of good therapy already on the market. There's three approved drugs that help treat opioid addiction. And we're, we're open. Yeah, like methadone and morphine and more opioids, right? um suboxone i mean what are you what are you talking about those those are all opioids <laughs> so you're not treating the problem with and i've even seen people say that about kratom as well oh you're just you know trading addictions well you know if you trade addiction from heroin to suboxone at least you're taking out like a pretty goddamn good chance that you're gonna overdose trying to get high all right now if you trade the shit for Kratom, there's a pretty good chance that you're not going to die no matter what. And you'll still get high if you want. So I don't know. I mean, it just it, we always forget to talk about cannabis um, as far as the FDA or the Opioid Commission or anybody else. Um, they never mention cannabis, but there's your another alternative. So, you know, if you're talking about the opioid crisis, you guys aren't doing shit. I mean, the FDA, they literally are not. They're not doing anything. You guys are approving synthetic uh, drugs still, opioids, and other analogs of opioids. And that's another thing, man. It's like you guys approve all these analogs and shit, but you don't like the, na the whole plant natural stuff, which happens to be the safest form so i don't know i mean i don't think you guys are really doing a whole lot <laughs> the 21 million pills that were shipped to a town with 2900 people what the fda do about that i mean you're at the border worried about whether or not some ground up leaves are coming through meanwhile um 21 million pills just laying around in a in a warehouse outside of a town of 2900 people so i don't know man it seems like you you guys aren't doing shit open to looking at new new products and so we are putting out additional guidance documents and policies when he talks about he's looking at new products to help in the opioid crisis we already heard about what that is you're looking at some kind of uh uh vaccination against addiction which is just totally mind warping like what are you talking about and you're also looking at other drugs quite frankly that's all you guys care about is is developing drugs that you think or that someone pays you to say is safe <laughs> to try to create we don't a, trust a you. bigger market for people who want to come in and develop products to treat opioid addiction we don't think kratom is one of those products but if it is if people do think that there's good science to back this up we don't agree with that right now based on what we've seen um, but people should come in and demonstrate that uh, with some reliable evidence now the american kratom association had um gathered signatures before and talked to people that wanted to, you know, put in their word to the FDA when the FDA asked for comments. Um, and guess what? A lot of scientists chimed in. And what they come up with was that, hey, we're looking into it right now, but from what we've seen so far, it looks pretty safe. <laughs> like, even if you look at the FDA's number, which I think they're up to 44 now with the people that they say had died because of something to do with Kratom. And as we're going to see in a minute, it didn't have a whole lot to do with Kratom. Uh, even if they had one that was Kratom only and the guy died, we couldn't. they couldn't explain exactly how he died. But Kratom was the only thing he had in his system that was like some kind of drug, I guess, or whatever. And he never had, had never done opioids before, so who knows. Um, but even if that guy died because of the Kratom, like somehow the Kratom had an action that caused him to die which is that's what we're trying to prove here with cannabis or kratom 
You guys say that it's dangerous. You guys say Kratom can kill you. Well, how? What's the mechanism? You know, we know that with opioids, it shuts down your respiratory system because it binds to your opioid receptors and it basically just, you're, you just stop breathing. <laughs> we know that. That's something you could demonstrate in a test. And uh, yeah, that's how that happens. How do, what about Kratom though? We'll see what they say. Um, and it doesn't really line up with their little list of people that died supposedly related to Kratom. So we'll see. So it's Kratom, not Kratom, as in craving? <laughs> it's, been, it's been pronounced both ways. We call it Kratom uh, at, at FDA. And, it and I don't know. I've been calling it Kratom for a while. I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. So sometimes I'll say the uh, different way. But I've heard like five different ways to say it. Whatever. In terms of what you hear back from the DEA, how complicated is it to, to go ahead and get this put on a list of banned substances? Well, that's a decision they're going to they're make independent um, of FDA. FDA makes a recommendation to DEA based on um, available scientific evidence, makes a public health recommendation to DEA. Ultimately, the scheduling decision, how they schedule, is made by the DEA itself with yeah. our advice. Are there other names that Kratom is sold under? I just ask as a parent, if you're concerned about this, if this is something that's being sold at coffee shops and herbal supplement areas, if you want to make... As a parent, you should probably just know what you're, what's going on. You should look into what's out there and, you know, you should probably get your information from a more reliable source than this guy. Make sure your kids aren't using it. What, what else should you know? Yeah, I mean, this is a name it's marketed under. It comes from a tree that's um, prevalent in Malaysia. Uh, it's been banned in 16 countries, including Sweden and Germany and Australia. It's banned in two states, uh, at least that I know of, Alabama and Indiana. Did, you, did anything about that guy's demeanor tell anybody in the audience that this guy is willing to work with real scientists on this and talk about real things? Because so far, what they've done has nothing to do with science. Um, and we're going to look at some scientists that kind of don't like what's going on here. So scientists warn Trump FDA's war on a plant could worsen the opioid crisis. And this is from a fast company. <clears throat> A group of scientists is challenging an FDA report released this week warning against the use of Kratom based in part on an FDA analysis that emphasizes the substance's similarity to traditional opioids like morphine and heroin. Quote, taken in total, the scientific evidence we've evaluated about Kratom provides a clear picture of the biological effect of this substance. FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb said in a statement, quote, Kratom could not uh, should not be used to treat medical conditions, nor should it be used as an alternative to prescription opioids. There is no evidence to indicate that Kratom is safe or effective for any medical use. Um, yeah, there's a lot of evidence about that. You know why? Because there's like three or four million people that use Kratom currently in the United States. We'll say that a lot of people would be dying if this shit wasn't safe. All right, so... Advocates of Kratom have long said that the plant-derived substance can be safer than opioid drugs sold at a pharmacy or on the street, fighting pain and treating symptoms of opioid withdrawal without the same potentially deadly effects on respiration. Federal officials have occasionally seized imported shipments of Kratom on behalf of the FDA, saying it's a new, untested dietary ingredient, but it's still widely available, and in most states it's readily sold as a dietary supplement in convenience stores, head shops, Kratom specialty stores, and online. Quote, the available science is clear that Kratom, although having effects on opioid receptors in the brain, is distinct from classical opioids, e.g. morphine, heroin, oxycodone, etc., in its chemistry, biological effects, and origin. Kratom is a tree in a coffee family, not the uh, opium poppy family. The scientists wrote in an open letter to Gottlieb and White House advisor Kellyanne Conway and circulated by the American Kratom Association, an industry group. Quote, importantly, as commonly used in raw plant form, it does not appear to produce the highly addictive euphoria or lethal respiratory depressing effects of classical opioids. The group, including scientists from John Hopkins University, Columbia University, and the University of Rochester, wrote, Conway has been overseeing White House efforts to combat the national opioid crisis. Um, scientists have known since the 90s that Kratom contains alkaloid compounds that exhibit mild opioid activity. 
that made the FDA's warning puzzling and frustrating for some researchers. Quote, I don't really see what this adds to the field, to this field or adds to the body of knowledge around Kratom. Andrew Krugel, a Columbia University pharmacologist who has extensively studied Kratom and signed the letter, uh, told Tonic, quote, the problem with saying it's an opioid without qualification that it just paints uh, everything with this broad brush and obviously carries a negative connotation given what's going on in the country right now, Krugel says. He also questioned the technique used by the agency as a process known as molecular modeling or model docking that attempts to match a computer model of a compound with its receptors in the body. In its warning, the FDA called it a novel scientific analysis using a comp computational model developed by agency scientists which provided even stronger evidence of Kratom compounds' opioid properties. But the process tends to be used in the early stages of drug development. Quote, you would not be very confident in the results of that uh, assay, Krugel said. It's all done virtually in a computer. <clears throat> so yeah, to, to reiterate, they basically created a computer model of what um, Kratom supposedly does when it's uh, in, the, in the human body or whatever. And let me see here. If you look on, uh, here's Scott Gottlieb's statement about this situation. Um, I'm not going to read it, but I will pr provide links to this statement and the response from the American Kratom Association down below in the uh, description. So anyway, they give you this idea here of what the model in the computer the thing does here. And it shows that compounds in the kratom strongly bind to the opioid receptors. We don't know what the hell they're even talking about here. All right, this is this is kind of weird. I'm not scientifically qualified, I guess you could call it, to look at this diagram and really tell you what's going on. So um, what we do know, though, is the interaction between kratom compounds uh and actual opioids from the opioid plant not the same it doesn't do the same thing i'm not sure it, once again i'm not scientifically qualified to tell you exactly what differences there are but i think somebody mentions that in something that i'm about to read in in somewhere somewhere in all this that i have for you so in his analysis, the FDA's goat leave, in addition to comparing Kratom with other opioids, also pointed to reports of 44 deaths associated with the use of Kratom. Skeptics say the deaths can't be conclusively attributed to Kratom and point out that many of the people who died also had other drugs in their systems, from alcohol to morphine. Quote, they are claiming that 44 people died from a range of causes, including just being completely unexplainable while also using Kratom said the American Kratom Association chairman Dave Herman in a statement. Quote, those people who died likely also drank water, a soda, used uh, hair shampoo in the shower that day, um, and in uh, most cases in that list, used other drugs. But we're going to get into that list in a minute here. Don't worry. Uh, that's why my videos are longer than other people's, I guess, because I'm trying to give you, like, everything that, that I got on this right now. This is, like... All the updates that just happened right now. I've been reporting on this Kratom situation since it started happening. Um, and to be honest, I can't even believe this shit. It's, it's like just unfolding right before our eyes, you know. Like, And I, and I mean, you can see the sinister uh, overtones of it. Like, hey, we only want you to use the pills that we make in the lab that we stamp out into, into doses that we know we can count each one and know exactly where they're all at and all this shit. And they make it sound like it's all strict and it's by the book and that nothing can be abused in this system and they got control over it all. Meanwhile, we, we're in the middle of the worst crisis in American history. And it's an opioid crisis. And it's a manufactured crisis. Manufactured by who, you might ask? Well, manufactured by the fucking FDA. They're the ones that have been approving the drugs. Um, and then there's the Congress who, because they're so corrupted by the same people that corrupt the FDA, um, who would that be? Hmm, that would be the pharmaceutical corporations. So the pharmaceutical corporations, they, they got their politicians who they've been bribing for years and decades. 
Well, they got them to write a law so that the DEA was basically um, hamstrung when it comes to enforcing uh, certain rules of the game, so to speak, for the big pharma. And a couple of those that really kind of put some feet to this fucking crisis was the one where, you know, you're only supposed to manufacture so many opioids, you know. What about that? <laughs> huh? What happened to that one? We got 21 million painkillers in a town of 2,900 people. So I guess that one failed. And yeah, the, the DEAs just couldn't. What do they do about this? You know, you got the DEA worried about somebody having too many pounds of weed in Oregon. Well, what about this? There's 21 million opioid painkillers in a town with 2,900 people. It's unbelievable. So that's where we are with... Uh, the FDA and the opioid crisis. Meanwhile, they want to shut down anything natural that could help people that, that are suffering. And they want to tell you that you can only do the approved pills that they make, whether it be opioids or synthetic, whether it be methadone or suboxone. <sighs> Unreal, man. Still, the FDA says that at least one death report involves someone who reportedly never used any opioids besides Kratom and caution against mixing Kratom with the other drugs. So they give you this list, and it's just chock full of people that had benzodiazepines and opioids mixed with Kratom or alcohol. And then they use that to tell you, oh, don't mix Kratom with other drugs, as if the Kratom is what fucking was the thing that killed you, or the mixture of it with the other drugs caused the problem. When he has no idea about that, because like he said himself, we don't have enough science to even fucking make any claims. So why are you making a claim there? You don't have any science, what are you doing? Making claims. That would, be, that would require some science. You would have to show the interaction between Kratom and the other drug and what exactly the fucking interaction did to cause an adverse reaction or the death or whatever. Cases of mixing Kratom, other opioids, and other types of medication is extremely troubling because the activity of the Kratom at the opioid receptors indicates that there may be similar risks of combining Kratom with certain drugs, just as there are with FDA-approved opioids, according to the agency. Um, believe that at your own risk, I guess. Uh, now, this is an article, Does the Herbal Supplement Kratom Really Contain Opioids? And it was like that one doctor just said back there, it isn't really necessarily that it contains opioids or whatever, but opioids are pretty much described as something that causes a certain effect where it binds to the receptors in the body. So let's just read this. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an opioid is a natural or synthetic chemical. So it doesn't have to be the plant material or something derived from the plant itself. It could just be a chemical that they made out of thin air. There you have it. So I guess it could, you could, like I've heard people say, oh, you can't classify something as an opioid if it didn't come from the plant or whatever. So that's just not the case. That's not how the Center for Disease Control and Prevention defines opioids. And let's, let's see, they go on to say, um, we're talking about a natural or synthetic chemical that interacts with opioid receptors in the body. Based on this definition, compounds in Kratom are opioids because they do act on opioid receptors, said Wes Hunter, the director of pharmacy at UCA Health uh, Yampa Valley Medical Center in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. It's true that one of the main active compounds in Kratom called mitrogenine uh, is structurally different than from morphine, one of the oldest known opioid drugs derived from the pop, opium poppy. According to a 2012 review paper published in the Journal of uh, Medical Toxicology, but Hunter noted that some synthetic opioids, including fentanyl and methadone, don't look much like morphine in their structure either. Quote, even though this is not a direct descendant of the opioid plant, it still has direct effects on the opioid receptors, Hunter is told Live Science. Hunter added that some synthetic opioids are derived from materials found in coal tar. <laughs> Quote, it's not like you need an opium poppy to have an opioid effect. So, point well taken. And now we're going to get into this article here talking about uh, FDA Kratom deaths. I've seen Nick tweeting about this as he was 
discovering it before he wrote the article. All right, so the U.S. and Food and Drug Administration is escalating its campaign against Kratom with the release of new information describing a series of deaths involving the popular herbal drug. The FDA says the incidents underscore the serious and sometimes deadly risks of Kratom, but the list contains a number of events in which Kratom played an uncertain role, including a case in which the teenager hanged himself and another in which a drug overdose victim tested positive for nine different substances. As a whole, the data suggests that the FDA is ba uh, basing its warning about Kratom's fatal harms on a patchwork of loosely sourced anecdotal reports that say very little about how the drug is responsible for the fatalities or even whether it even is at all. This kind of reminds me of in Colorado, they had some article came out talking about marijuana deaths. Um, and sometimes you'll see these prohibitionists like, oh, well, look at these marijuana deaths. And it's like two of them were suicides and one was a homicide. Had nothing to do with marijuana or whatever, you know. So, And then the reports where they're like, the car crashes are going up. But really all it is is that they just changed their minds and decided to count anything that if somebody in the car had marijuana in their system, then it was a marijuana death. So that's the only way they get their numbers is they pad them and they, you know, they rig the way that they get the numbers. And this is no different. This is no fucking different. And this is so disingenuous to every, everything about it is just totally wrong. All right. And this is totally a disrespect towards these, these, uh, per, these people that are dead. No matter how they died, I guarantee you none of them died because of the Kratom. That's just what I'm going to say right up front before I even read a single one of them. So in a press release Tuesday, FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb sought to reinforce a November public health advisory in which he claimed there was, a, there was clear data on the increasing harm associated with Kratom. At the time, the FDA said it was aware of 36 deaths involving Kratom, which it held up as evidence of the gravest of the drug's potential harms. The FDA has fought eight additional case, or found eight additional cases since then, Gottlieb said Tuesday, bringing the total number of Kratom-associated deaths to 44. He also announced the agency had conducted a novel scientific analysis of Kratom that further supports the FDA's characterization of the substance as an opioid. This new data... Uh, adds to our body of substantial scientific evidence supporting our concerns about the safety and abuse potential of Kratom, said Gottlieb. As the scientific data and adverse event reports have clearly revealed, compounds in Kratom make it so it's just a plant. It's, it's, wait, so it's not just a plant, it's an opioid? FDA has maintained that Kratom is dangerous and has pointed to the lack of an approved medical use as a justification to impound numerous shipments of Kratom products into the U.S. And as soon as somebody makes a claim about the medical uses of Kratom, then they, you know, they'll have a huge problem with that because, you know, you might have seen that with CBD where the FDA came out and said, hey, you can't say that CBD products cure cancer or do anything to relieve cancer problems. Only the FDA is allowed to do that kind of shit. Come on. On Tuesday, Gottlieb reiterated concerns about Kratom's potential for abuse, addiction, and serious health consequences, including death, as proof of the drug's deadly harm. The FDA released reports on 36 deaths involving the use of Kratom, culled from the academic research, uh, medical examiner reports, and adverse event reports. Gottlieb also said the FDA plans to release the eight newly received reports. Almost all of the FDA's cases involve subjects who were found to be on multiple substances at the time of their death, with the vast majority including either illicit prescription drugs that carry well-known fatal risks. One incident described a teenager who had hanged himself after struggling with depression and prescription drug abuse. He tested positive for a variety of drugs, including Kratom, as well as alcohol and a handful of prescription drugs. I'm also going to put a link to this article in the uh, description below. So if you want to look at these more detailed uh, breakdowns of those cases, 
and the reports or whatever, you can go ahead and do that. Another case involves a man who had fallen out a window, broke his arm, and refused treatment before dying. He was ultimately found to have had nine different substances in his bloodstream, among them mitrogenine, the primary psychoactive substance in Kratom. FDA's list of Kratom-related deaths also includes a 43-year-old man determined to have died from complications due to deep vein thrombosis. He had a long list of medical problems, including chronic back and shoulder pain and a history of alcohol and prescription drug abuse. At the time of his death, he'd recently been prescribed five different medicines. His toxicology test came back positive for opioids, benzodiazepines, best known as Xanax, antidepressants, and a medication apparently used to treat his Tourette syndrome. He also tested positive for Kratom. Unbelievable, man. Um, one case the FDA listed as a Kratom related death, which had been completely redacted in the document appears elsewhere in an agency database as a death by homicide due to a gunshot wound to the chest. Now that one's kind of important because it's like they redacted the, the cause of death out of there. It was so redacted that all you could find was pieces of it that you could put together and find it in a different place in the database maybe even more than one place and then they found it and they found an unredacted version apparently and yeah apparently it was a gunshot wound to the chest so i mean this should disqualify the whole list right there whatever i mean come on nine of the fda's 36 documented deaths were related to a string of fatal overdoses in sweden in 2010 which involved the the controversial kratom based product that had been adulterated with a dangerous synthetic opioid. An additional eight cases that the FDA previously released to HuffPost consisted largely of voluntary uh, voluntary reports, including accounts from family members who simply suspected their loved ones had died from kratom use. Just one of the FDA cases appears to involve a presence of kratom alone, though the report includes no information on the death apart from the subject's age and ethnicity. The report shows the individual tested positive for high levels of mitrogenine, but as in the result or the rest of the cases says nothing about how the substance was determined to have contributed to his death. The FDA denied HuffPost requests for additional information in that case. In his Tuesday statement, Goatlieb said the agency is investigating another Kratom related death involving an individual who, quote, had no known historical or toxicologic evidence of opioid use except for Kratom. Taken together, the FDA case reports provide no clear picture of the deadly risks the uh, agency claims Kratom poses. There's also a certain irony in the fact that so many of the deaths that the FDA associates with Kratom also appear to have involved prescription drugs, which it argues must be safer than Kratom. In fairness to the FDA, it has acknowledged the limitations of the reporting systems used uh, to compile these deaths. On its website, the FDA says the inclusion of a case doesn't imply a causal relationship between product uh, and an event. It also notes that reports do not always contain enough detail to properly evaluate an event. Goatlieb appears to be at least somewhat aware of these constraints. Quote, many of the cases received could not be fully assessed because of limited information provided, he said in the statement adding that, quote, a few cases raise concerns that Kratom is being used in combination with other drugs. Quote, cases of mixing Kratom with other opioids and other types of medication is extremely troubling because the activity of Kratom at opioid receptors indicates there may be similar risk of combining Kratom with certain drugs, just as there are with FDA-approved opioids. Um, sure, dude, but you're talking about situations where people are mixing all kinds of pills and alcohol together. Are you really sure it's the Kratom that's causing the deaths or the, you know, just throwing Kratom in on top of that shit. And in some of these cases, the amount of the other drugs taken was pretty substantial. Um, I'm sure that the Kratom absolutely didn't contribute to the one where the guy had nine different drugs in his body. All right, anyway, Goatlieb specifically referenced prior FDI warnings about Kratom side effects, including seizures and respiratory depression. But these potentially deadly symptoms don't appear in any sort of discernible pattern in the cases in the F- that the FDA cites. That's important, too. 
because he's basically making a claim that you know this is the, the deaths are similar to what you'd see with an opioid death, the seizures and the respiratory depression. All of a sudden, you're like, but wait a minute, none of your fucking 44 deaths really had any of that going on. <laughs> They're not well documented elsewhere. While scientific studies on the effects of mitrogenine on humans are still lacking, largely because it's difficult to get funding for research on a plant that can't be patented. Hmm. No wonder they don't like it. It's just like cannabis. If you can't patent the fucking plant because there's so many different species and it's all medicine, different combinations of different thing, you know, elements and compounds within the plant, you can't you know, the government doesn't like something that can't be controlled or at least attempted to be controlled and individual doses numbered where they can keep track of everything and in a hypothetical way uh, know what everybody's doing and, you know, make sure nobody's abusing the system. That's what they like. Uh, they don't like natural stuff, even if it's safe. And that's why they're trying to tell you it's not safe because if it is safe, that kind of ruins their whole idea that they have to control it if it's not dangerous there's no fucking reason for the fda to have to control it and whether you want to say that the addiction to kratom is an issue or not um that can be debated no doubt about it but we can debate that same issue when it comes to uh, obviously nicotine we know that's addictive um and caffeine which is also addictive but is it something that we really freak out about and why should we freak out about kratom that's that's the two questions that you have to ask most of the emerging uh, emerging science on kratom has found it to be largely benign especially when taken in lower moderate doses andrew krugel a columbian university chemist has authored a number of studies on the pharmacology of kratom on tuesday he questioned goat Leib's conclusion that the substance is simply an opioid a conclusion the commissioner based off the FDA's use of computational modeling on the chemical structure of Kratom's compounds. Quote, they don't have to do this to claim that Kratom's an opioid because it is, said Krugel. But the question is whether it's an atypical opioid, which is my preferred terminology. Does it have a better side effect profile than the classical opioid drugs like morphine that we use every day? That's the key question here. Krugel added that the FDA's analysis was an order of magnitude uh, an order of magnitude less rigorous than many of the studies that had already been conducted on kratom. He said the FDA's claim uh, was akin to saying that all opioid agonists have the same effect, which is not true based on what we've learned about these compounds. Opioid agonists provide pain relief by binding to opioid receptors. The FDA's presentation of kratom-related deaths appears to follow a broader practice in which the officials seem to be determining that any fatal incident involving kratom must therefore be related to the drug. But this is haphazard character uh, this haphazard characterization of kratom's supposed deadly risks does nothing to expand our understanding of how the drug supposedly kills people if it does at all. In fact, lumping these cases together, despite their obvious dissimilarities, may end up producing a misleading narrative about Kratom's actual effects, said Leo Beltsley, an associate professor of law and health sciences at Northwest Northeastern University. Quote, you have to identify and isolate the effects of the drug, and the only real way to do that is through randomized controlled trials or really robust observational evidence, he said. We don't have that. FDA data could have severe implications for the future of Kratom. And, you know, another thing about that is we go back to where they're like, well, you know, it's hard to get research if you can't, like, patent the plant. The FDA, then it should be it should be up to the government then to do the research themselves, you know. Like, hey, we're, we can't assist a commercial entity that wants to come in here and some kind of corporate entity that wants to manufacture something and eventually distribute it so they you know the onus is on them but if this shit's just in the public at large and basically it is safe enough and benign enough to not worry about it well then the, the government still should get on get on to some testing you know it's why not i guess it's because they have no motivational bag of money back there telling them to <laughs> That's the only reason it seems like anything in the government happens these days is if a bunch of corrupt fucking lobbyists 
or some kind of money just comes pouring in. Obviously, that's what's going on here, man. There's no other way around it. And if you want to know the truth, it's probably because somebody in the background is probably trying to patent a way to make synthetic mitrogenina. Um, that's got to be what it is, man. So the latest press release comes as the agency appears to be leading a push to ban the substance under the federal law. Following pushback, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration postponed a move to place Kratom on Schedule 1 alongside drugs like heroin and LSD. But the FDA recently completed an analysis that may help determine how the DEA proceeds. A spokesperson for the DEA said Tuesday that it could take, quote, months or even years for the agency to reach a final decision on scheduling. Based on FDA's recent publication, uh, public actions, however, it appears to favor outright prohibition, a move that would cut off millions of Americans, many of whom have struggled with opioids or other prescription drugs, from their preferred method of treatment. Some drug policy experts and a handful of congressional lawmakers have said that the damage caused by forcing people away from Kratom and possibly back onto other prescription or illicit drugs would far outweigh the current harms. Furthermore, if Kratom were to be banned, many individuals would simply continue buying and using it illegally. If the feds are worried about controlling Kratom now, driving it into the black market will only make that harder. Um, right. I mean, come on. What are you guys thinking? Do you think the DEA deserves to have another legitimate thing to go kicking people's doors in for or whatever? I mean, come on, man. They've been trying to shut weed down for 40 some odd years of like 45 years or some shit no luck there looks like weed is even more places more potent and more i guess cheaper than ever before for lack of a better word Belecki admitted there was still a lot of uncertainty surrounding kratom and said it warrants further research to better understand its full range of effects and possible harms but considering there is an estimated 3 to 5 million Kratom users around the U.S., according to industry figures, he added that the relatively low numbers of supposed Kratom-related deaths, even in questionable cases like these, could actually suggest that Kratom is not very harmful. And yeah, man, that's what I just said earlier. Uh, so, great article by Nick Wing. Um, I... I don't know what else to say, you know. Uh, there's a little thing here. Okay, so not everybody's happy with the decision to restrict Kratom use in the U.S. The American Kratom Association is a Colorado-based nonprofit committed to advocating on behalf of consumers so they can, quote, make their own choices and their well-being. Here's the tweet that they sent out. And this tweet and down here, this, this writing is basically pieces of the further uh you know comment back to goat lieb so kratom is presently serving as a lifeline away from strong often dangerous opioids for many of the several million americans who use kratom the american kratom association said in a statement a ban on kratom would put them at risk of relapse to opioid use with the potential consequences of overdose death the American Kratom Association has previously characterized the FDA crackdown on the herb as a hoax backed by shoddy computer models. In 2017, research published uh, in the journal uh, Neuropharmacology concluded, uh, concluded that more research needed to be done on Kratom, but that available evidence has not shown any deaths have occurred due to the use of Kratom alone. On February 8th, the group sent a letter addressed to Kellyanne Conway, appointed as opioid czar by the U.S. President Donald Trump, asking the administration to intervene. Since December 2017, Conway has led a White House commission described as a skeleton crew of political appointees to tackle the U.S. opioid crisis. The group that has recently been engulfed in controversy as health experts have accused the commission of ignoring scientifically backed policy proposals. And just like this Kratom situation is one of those, so is the cannabis situation. They're just totally, the so-called Opioid Commission and Kellyanne Conway, they don't give a shit about any of this opioid thing. The, the people dying, they don't care about that. Every, everything involved in this situation to them is just numbers on a piece of fucking paper. <laughs> That's it. 
to them, the numbers they like to see are the money going into their bank accounts and the corrupt lobbyists that keep putting it there. So they're going to do their bidding. They don't care about your numbers. All they care about is those numbers. And to keep doing their bidding is to keep doing what they're already doing. They haven't tried to change anything in this opioid mess. The only thing I keep hearing is that they're going to go after doctors and patients and shit. Basically crack down on opioids. Like they used to crack down on crack cocaine. Or like they used to crack down on marijuana. You know, cracking skulls and putting people in prison cells for just being users. So anyway, I'm going to link up this response. Uh, well, the this right here is actually the, the uh, statement from the FDA commissioner, Scott Gottlieb. So you can read that if you want. And you can also read the response from the American Kratom Association. And all this just reminds me of the battle of wits <clears throat> between um, LaGuardia and Harry Anslinger. Because, well, I'm just going to read this real quick. The LaGuardia Committee was the first in-depth study into the effects of smoking marijuana in the United States. The report systematically contradicted claims made by the U.S. Treasury Department that smoking marijuana results in insanity, deteriorates physical and mental health, assists in criminal behavior and juvenile delinquency, and is physically addictive and is a gateway drug to more dangerous drugs. The report was presented by the New York Academy of Medicine on behalf of a commission appointed in 1939 by New York Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia, who was a strong opponent of the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act. Released in 1944, the report infuriated Harry Anslinger, who was campaigning against marijuana. Anslinger condemned it as unscientific. <laughs> it was nothing but scientific. They did studies. They actually looked at the existing data that they had to work with and studied stuff on the ground as well as in the lab. So for five years, it was a fucking really expanded study. After more than five years of research, the members of the committee drew up a catalog of 13 salient points with the conclusion they reached. The practice of smoking marijuana does not lead to addiction in the medical sense of the word. The sale and distribution of marijuana is not under control of any single organized group. The use of marijuana does not lead to morphine or heroin or cocaine addiction and, is, and no effort is made to create a market for these narcotics by simulating practice of marijuana smoking. Marijuana is not the de determining factor in the commission of major crimes. Marijuana smoking is not widespread among school children. Juvenile delinquency is not associated with the practice of marijuana smoking. The publicity concerning this catastrophic effects of marijuana smoking in New York City is unfounded. Therefore, according to the LaGuardia report, the gateway drug theory is without foundations. So that's just, this is the same thing that the government did then. They just stonewalled real facts and information that would help the cause, just like they are now. And then they put out their own information, which, quite frankly, <laughs> you can't compare to the reefer madness that Anslinger did. But, <clears throat> yeah, um, this guy right here would like to. And that's what's going on right now with Kratom. Um, I'm sure we're going to hear something from the DEA probably sooner rather than later based on all the shit that I've been seeing about this in the last, like, I don't know, since November. So that's all I got on this story. Um, if you just stumbled in, consider checking out some more videos and maybe subscribing. Uh, that'll be it.